I've got one question for you. Are you ready? What is going on, Tommy? It is another wonderful night at Stacey Lick Music. What's going on, everybody? And today we have the amazing James Longstreet. What's going on, buddy? We can see him. Can you hear How us? How do you do? Hey, what's going on, buddy? I'm here. I'm here. Good, good, good. So, James, uh, it's again awesome to have you in house. Uh, how are things? Are he's out of Nashville, Tennessee, right? Or Franklin, yep, right Tennessee, now, one of um, the suburbs. I'm sitting outside a, a venue called Kimbrose in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Sort of a famous little venue here. They got a songwriters' night going on, and so I'm outside. Uh, so. Yeah, this is going to be good. And after we're done here, I'm going to go play a couple songs in there. And I'm happy to be here. Happy to, you know, it's, I've heard about you guys, like I said, about a year ago. And glad to finally be here. Oh, right on, man. We're excited to have you on. And, you know, right out of Nashville. Love it, man. Best country, some of the best country music. And I'm telling everybody, go check out James one of I would consider one of the best cowboy country artists that I have heard in a long time. I love I love his vibe, and we'll get more into that in a second. But you know what time it is right now. We all know what time it is. It is time to talk about the desserts. Get tasty. We're, we're gonna get tasty on everybody here for a second. And uh, you know what? Today I might have beat I might have meet James. I don't know. I might have beat him. Um, today, here's what I want. I'm going to let everybody know that I made. Well, you made, you made something. Uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, get me excited I... for a second. Peanut brittle. Peanut brittle. Ooh. Homemade peanut brittle. Homemade peanut brittle. From, who, from Not whose house? By... Whose house did you steal it from? <laughs> It's gonna be tough to beat. <laughs> Just gonna say, <laughs> Just... <laughs> somebody's missing peanut brittle out there. So, somebody is, and I, I, uh, you know, to keep me out of trouble, um, I will just say that it was somebody I know really well, and I got this peanut brittle from them. They know who made the peanut brittle, okay. and hopefully they never watch this show <laughs> well, as, long as, uh, as long as cops aren't looking for you then uh, you're good yeah well i didn't yeah i didn't get out of a grocery store i'm not like hey steven i'm just i'm just thieving from people's pantries i need this brittle <laughs> give me this brittle give me this brittle i got to so yes i have gotten some somebody has is missing some peanut brittle uh -oh. and i have taken their penny brittle and it's all mine now. So uh, I will just eat the evidence and be on my way. Crazy savage. James, what do we got, buddy? We know that uh, the man has brought something amazing. Okay, I didn't make anything, so I know it's a tragedy. Ugh. But I did win a cookie like giveaway. Crazy, right? I won a giveaway. I never won giveaways here. <laughs> but I won a cookie giveaway from Diesel Cookies. I think they're out of North Carolina. So... These things are massive. They sent, put you in, in perspective, they sent me six cookies, right? And the package weighed four pounds. Oh, my like, goodness. That shows you, like, how much like, they are. So I'll show you just one of these things. These, these things are massive. So these are, these cookies, just look how big this, this is my hand. Like, look how big that thing is. <laughs> like, you can see, just like the, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I, I think it tastes like, is that like a pie? What is that, a pie? This is, uh, the flavor is old-fashioned butterscotch, oatmeal, walnut. Oh. But, I mean, that and this one's an oatmeal cream pie. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this one is 
a s'mores. And like I said, it's still same same size here. Diesel but, uh, cookies. Yeah. Diesel cookies. Diesel Check Diesel out. cookies. Diesel cookies on. Go check them out. The man drink. won a giveaway yet again. So surprising that the man wins another giveaway. Uh, I'm dying, dying, dying of shock. Dying of shock yet again. The food related giveaways now. So. That is that is a rarity. But I did see the. <laughs> he's now he's now like, hey, my tummy is now wanting some stuff. My beard was hungry before, and now my tummy is. Well, at least I didn't steal him. <laughs> stolen food is good food it tastes much better <laughs> giving away is better than stolen food. what i had to do i had to do a lot of work you have to do a lot of like sleight of hand to get food from someplace still free still free 3.99 <laughs> so and then so james uh the other james the new the new james james longstreet Long uh, Street. You, you say Long Street. You know, if we're, we'll get a... Yes. So, James, this is my question for you, my friend. Uh, what is your go-to dessert out of Nashville, Tennessee? What is your go-to dessert? Mm, out of Nashville, Tennessee. You know, uh, my home dessert, I'm going I'm to do two, if that's okay. Gotcha. My home dessert oh, yeah. lately has been yogurt and chocolate mixed in there that's my and little granola mute muesli is what you muesli which i just learned about about this year it's changed my life i don't know how but um and then five daughters donuts Ooh. cookies yeah. here and they got uh they got one cookie it's a uh it's a chocolate I don't think there's any. It's like one of those flower lists, which you wouldn't think would be that okay. good, but oh my goodness! Mm. Nice. Five, is that five dollars? Have you heard? You've heard of five dollars? I have five not heard. Of five dollars. Uh, 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 but we're giving him a shout out. So yeah, five, five dollars donuts. Five. Apparently, the daughters are making good cookies. Yeah, they're and making. Yeah, they're making good there cookies. You go. <laughs> they got a good. And then uh, the the dozen bakery is where I get my the, my other my sweets there. Nice. There you go. There, there you go. go. Which, what's your favorite there? What's your favorite there? At the uh, dozen. Yeah. yeah. I like a good I like a good croissant. Oh. And then a basic then a basic chocolate chip cookie. That's my that's my go to. Yeah, I'm a big chocolate. That's like the basic. Like if you can do a good chocolate, I will come back to your establishment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you make yeah, the basics. I mean, basics are just where it comes from. But yeah, if you can make a good chocolate chip cookie, it's definitely everything else is, is going to be great. Amazing. Spot on. Spot on, man. Spot on. So, what is if when you are out on the gig? What is right before you're starting a show? What is the one food that you have to have before us before your gig? What is the one food? Something something light usually, right? You, yeah. And I guess before a gig, I and that's a good question. I usually try not to. I, you know, I really try not to eat before a gig. Tell you the truth. That's um, what's always like, like our past guests have said the kind of like the same thing. Usually when they get ready for a gig or they're going to yeah. perform, either eat like nothing or you know they have like something light nothing really heavy to weigh on their stomach as they're performing yeah yeah because i don't want to take take a take a five minute nap break in my <laughs> <laughs> you know five minute intermission we gotta take a nap <laughs> well that's and that's why i that's why i asked that question because i want professionals who are out there doing it to tell people before they make that mistake of eating like hey i had a big pizza pie before i came right. on the stage and then they're like looking for the bathroom about halfway through and there's no bathroom in that stage there's <laughs> you'll be well, like, like I, ah! like i threw them the italian accent <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to be a pizza pie. <laughs> then grease your fingers recipe. all up on your instrument. Yeah, that's anyhow, that's right. Nice. Yeah, go. exactly. Exactly. That's what we're trying to have, you know, upcoming musicians get some tips from the pros. And there's yeah, your tip for the pro. If, and if you're going into a venue and you might be borrowing an instrument, that's the first question you're going to ask you. Did you have the pizza? 
because they don't want you to get their the grease all over their, oh, their wow. instrument. They'd be like, no, <laughs> yeah. you can't there. touch this. <laughs> no, did not have the steak. Though I was tempted by have, the steak. Did not, did not have the did a, a chicken leg with my hand just five minutes ago. No, I did not do that. <laughs> it's in my back pocket. <laughs> Turkey legs. That's right. That's absolutely. Remember that? Have you guys been to the? There's Renaissance Festival time. Oh, is it yeah, out here? Yeah, Those yeah, big old yeah. turkey legs. People are just like, "Hey, look oh, at this!" Like it's I'm a rite of passage. About. That's right. That's it's the best yeah, thing. Yeah, one of those. Yep. It's so. This is so related to this question to food again. Uh, when you're out on the road and you're like looking for a place to eat, what is your go-to place to eat out on the road? Yeah, uh, I tend when I'm in the when I'm in the um, like it changes from region to region, right? Uh, I, I like diners. Um, there's one here. Uh, you guys both might have the. Um, their 24-hour diner. The name is sort of. Uh, uh, oh, um, like Waffle House, what you mean? Sorry. Like Waffle House or something like that, or, or Denny's or. One of those. One of those. So, that that like, cause you know what you're gonna get. It's like, you know, you go to one of those, um, right. one of those chains, uh, but um. Yeah, I I like I like um, also is trying to hunt down good coffee shops when I'm yeah. when I'm on the road. I I got a talent for um, just looking at a review and being like, okay, we need to go to this one, yeah. and then you make an extra fifteen minute drive into the city. You know, that's pretty much my. You know, when I'm on the road, I like to try to try to find good cafes see see if i can you know see see what we can find i love that i love that what's your favorite coffee man um or what like what state like where where, where have you been where have you right. came to where you had like the best coffee um yeah there definitely are coffee deserts there used to be a lot more but not so much um it's getting better but i guess like you know I'm living like living in Nashville and in the s more south um there's um there's one called um counterculture that I really like and they sell that in a lot of different places and then um uh here locally there's a there's like a frothy monkey they're always decent very decent <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, I'm all over the place. I, you know, I, I seriously, I, I can, I'll go to a place for uh, a week and then I'll, I'll do something else. So I'm always changing it up. Even though, well, even if the establishment has like a cool name like that, like is a frothy monkey, frothy monkey, uh, that, that'd be definitely a place to go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um. Here in Franklin, I've been going to one called uh, Honest. I think it's called Honest here. Um, sort of been my go-to every day, but not every day. But yeah, but you know. Well, you wouldn't have a paycheck if you went every day because it's like Starbucks. I know. Seven I did bucks the, doing the math. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 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 I, I I do Starbucks in office and they have a Starbucks in the office that I work. So I'm always like getting the same thing. But I was like, boy, you could go poor just going here every day and getting like two drinks a day or something crazy. Um, but so now we'll kind of go diverge into some of the stuff that we heard this week. And I know that James and I always are like fairly, I mean, we just absolutely are always blown away by the musicians that we get on and how amazing it is. Uh, again, another, no disappointment, amazing music. Um, no. And again, anybody who's listening out there, go check out James. He's on Spotify. He's on Apple music. Uh, absolutely digging it. So, the one thing that I would say that when I listen to your music, I would say like that country music that comes from almost like that cowboy tradition. 
I thought that was what I got. That's what I got out of it. Very st- great music, but still like that. Your voice is so reminds me of some of the older country that comes right. out where it's more some more folky country type of. I, I loved it. I absolutely thought it was thank amazing. You. Yeah, and, thank you. And and I like the playing in it. Of course, I'm p- picking out guitar, mandolin, uh, any string instrument that you have in there. Absolutely enjoying the accompaniment to your voice, and I thought it was perfect. Any, what did you think, James? Yeah, with uh, with Spotify, um, I know they have the Hot Hot Summer uh, Bar Room, and then the the release that they had right now, the more recent release was Ice. Um, but yeah, I, I figured the same thing. Or each one was, like I said, I'm not really much a country guy myself, even though I live like in the South, you know, in, in Florida, uh, you know, but uh, where it's country is a lot more present around here, around here. But you know, but uh. But it's it's easy it's easy listening. Like you can listen to it, and even if you're not a fan of country, it's something that you could pick up. It's you know a little catchy and kind of you know like, oh I like this. You know what I'm saying? So that's how each each song that I heard was was to me. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a nice little southern like a Tennessee feel to it. You know what I'm saying? So you definitely put that in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's um it's sort of like I come from a like a background of a lot of different styles of music and so uh the crew it's i i like to almost call it like crooning i guess because i got like a baritone voice and to you know try different styles of singing you know i've gone from like i, I love hip-hop music i love r&b music i love electronic music and um as a producer you know i've 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 made records in every type of genre and and somehow ended up um, these these easy chord progression sort of story songs, and they just sort of sit, you know. Once I found, I discovered, you know, I've always known of obviously about country music and whatnot. But when I was like, okay, I can, I, I like this, you know, it fits with my voice and um, and the lyrics. My lyrics seem to also some you know i enjoy writing fun songs about life you know sometimes they're cheeky and maybe uh not cheeky but i guess you call it cheeky but um yeah just well uh, bar room was definitely like a bar room is like that right i was like yeah that's (laughs) exactly yeah i like the i like your take on bar room and you know what it was what really a bar room is about you know i loved it do you have any yeah. um like any kind of musical styles like uh, or influences that you kind of bring into your music like to you know your writing styles or how you perform your music like do you, uh, what influences do you kind of bring out in your music for, like from like different artists? Yeah, um, lately it's been a lot of like a bluegrass. I guess the um, you know you've seen Billy Strings and. Um, uh, like Sierra Farrell, they're both you know, out of Nashville right now, and um, and just uh, mainly acoustic instruments have been, I guess I'm okay, and I'm a drummer originally, and like I'm digging like only acoustic music, like for some reason once you throw a drum on there, I'm just like not like i think that about all music but personally this 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 style um you know on like on ice i think it's only a a a balron one of those irish uh i don't know i think it's an irish instrument the guy playing on is from ireland um but uh and that's just a light you know is but um yeah, Irish music actually. I would love to get out there and and just, anyways, keep traveling and and hopefully by my fifties I'll find my voice. <laughs> <laughs> or by it'll the be, time it'll be, it'll it'll be more more uh, I would say more uh, tone, you know, or more advanced. You know what I'm saying like uh, I would say uh, how like wine ages with you know, or it gets better with age. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost yeah. like how that your voice is gonna come out. I believe it because I, I like probably like I've sang my whole life and I've been writing songs since 
you know, probably preteen. And um, like my singing, my voice has definitely come into, I think it's as best as it's ever been, you know, throughout my whole life right now. And, um, and that's just a lot of practice, really, you know. So it's, but now I'm not, not a 16 singing, so. <laughs> hey, there you go. So, so from a, but you said that you have a background. So where is your background? So what is your background in music? Like you're, we're thinking what kind of inspired you to become this musician and producer, but also what was your background in music? Yeah, the first instrument, like I said, was drums. So um, I just been in school bands and then chorals, church choirs. Um, was probably one of my first, and then my parents are both musicians, so they're they're in they're into the uh, like my mother's a big Bette Midler fan, um, and my dad's voice. Uh, I always thought he sounded like Vince Gill. I was so I was always a yeah, fan of Vince Gill. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, and um, so I guess they yeah, and they did they played in cover bands and uh, did country tunes and um so it's always been sort of and i can't really say i mean it's easy to uh say it's country music but if i were to run around saying i'm doing country music no no one's gonna they would be like that's not country music you know i don't know what it is necessarily but um you know these genre sensitive <laughs> you know <laughs> music is sort of sensitive about their genres so i'm still sort of looking but i mean um anyway i don't know where i came from but that's that's i guess my background um all right so it's just a mixture of uh yeah that and boys to men and and you know like i said i love the hip-hop music and but then the, this singer songwriter thing really didn't take off till about six years ago. Um, before that, it was just producing beats and still singing, still singing, right. but um, sort of, uh, you know, not so heavily into this uh, crooner <laughs> thing and singing about, you know. Right, right. I think it's just, just American music. Yeah. That's still good. That's still a genre. It's still a genre. And I think that it can be encompassing a lot of things, which is fine, which is means that you have, you know, you can kind of make it all your own, right? Yeah. And to bring yeah, every so kind of I have genre, rele like, releases. Sorry. I'll say you have to kind of, I mean, it's cool to bring those genres. Like, let's say you're, you're into rap and, and electronic and hip hop. I mean, uh, R&B and stuff. It's cool to bring that into, you know, your genre. You know what I'm saying? So that that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't wait to like really like do that because I have um, right, I have songs cut with uh, features from you know with an R and B singer and this this the style of what I'm doing comes in so nice. and or like I have a a, a friend uh, both they're both in Los Angeles but one um, uh, Solaris is a is a Spanish hip hop you know so in the middle of one of you know a couple of tunes he'll come in and do a verse and it just takes people by surprise and i love it that's cool like intertwining genres that's cool bringing the country and uh r b you know what i'm saying kind of yeah. just having to make genre yeah, type yeah. Of songs. and it, and this like and it's and it's i have people i have friends from like san croix and the virgin islands and there like my parents would love this music because it's this this i don't know it's just storytelling and and like yeah. con folk music is sort of similar around the world um i guess i haven't been around the world but that you know from friends that are from different places will connect with it and kind of put it to or, their own what they've heard you know from yeah. their country but, or where yeah. they're from yeah Nice. Yeah. Cool. And you also produce. So what is so what kind of music are you so you kind of you said you produce all sorts of different artists over the years. 
Um, how long have you been doing that? And is what can we look? Can the folks out there look for that you've produced? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's probably started around. Uh, uh, let's see, then at least ten years ago now. Um, living in Los Angeles is just a melting pot of people. So, you know, I, I, uh, just started making friends and just kept making music together. And, um, you know, a lot of that isn't released even, I don't even know. I don't even know how I got this far with so little songs out there. I was in a band called high drags with my uh, sister for a while. And that was straight electronic dance music. So it, we're on uh, SoundCloud. If you look on SoundCloud, you'll find that there. And then, um, so if, I guess if you look up James Longstreet on SoundCloud or High Drags um, or the LAPC, you might find um, different beats and features. But um, a lot of that hasn't been released on uh, iTunes or Spotify. So I've been, I was really into the SoundCloud uh, sort of, I really like that, uh, you know, the artist community there is something really neat. So that's where you would but look. If, is the uh, yeah. de Decade music, is that like part of your producing or produce? Yep. So that's Sorry. like, Decade is a, a studio in Nashville, right out down on Music Row there. Uh, it's a partnership with two other artists. And, okay. um, you know, uh, producers or songwriters. And um, we uh, have been there for two years now. So it's new. <laughs> but don't let the name fool you. <laughs> 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 well, I call, I call it Decade because they say that Nashville is a 10-year 10 10-year town till you make it. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to trick yeah. the universe. <laughs> just get us right in there there you go <laughs> i've been here a decade you don't know you don't even know I've how many have been at least one <laughs> <laughs> i love it man that's I'm cool. sure of it <laughs> yeah that's right i've been here you know it's in dog years we're in dog years yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're a dog year company <laughs> that's right <laughs> um, but still, I mean, but so, so that being said, Nashville is a tough town. It is. A, there's a lot of very, very, very talented folks. How yep. are you feeling? Like when you go out there, how are you being received? How do you, or how do you feel you're being received? And then tell us a little bit about the, how hard it is to actually make it in this town. It's, it's sort of, it's pretty, it's difficult, you know, um, a lot of it is personal relations too so um i enjoy meeting new people and um so i guess that's why the 10-year town sort of kicks in because it's a lot of buddies and um your relationships so i'm about four years in now and i'm already starting to you know some of my relationships with songwriters and musicians and we're still pursuing it and together you know we could develop something i mean we might not jump into like someone else's camp uh okay. necessarily but we might develop our own as we go and that's um, cool that you're meeting like different people you know what i'm saying that the wheel is still going you know turning and meeting new people and stuff like that so it, it's even though it's slow it's you know what i'm saying you're going yeah. forward you know what i'm saying so that's really cool that you're, you're, you're keeping that momentum going and who knows like you could where you could be in you know five years you know what i'm saying so it's yeah that's all yeah, you never know. It just takes yeah. that one person to kind of get connected with and, you know, so. Yeah, totally. Like, it's, I'm just learning how to relax, just dive into the city, you know, um, get myself my part-time jobs, you know, and just try to make some good memories and not, like, think of how difficult it is, but still work at our craft. Um but yeah, but I've always like surrounding myself with very talent, you know. I guess you want that, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, especially being yeah. in Nashville. That's like, I mean, it's you're trying to fill big shoes, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's Nashville, so it's got to be intimidating for sure. Yeah, but see, as long as you, as long as you keep that momentum going, 
Mm -hmm. You're meeting people. You're you're constantly moving forward. I think you know what I'm saying. Just exactly like forward that, thinking. You know, connect that right yep. to that right person, and and there you go. Yeah, totally. Yep. And people from they got Belmont College there, just like, and then a lot of Berkeley students come in to Nashville. So the musicianship, you know, I appreciate good musicians and like the bluegrass scene out here and like just in the music you know and that's education in itself going out to just a show and watching right. somebody just brilliant a world musician just you know i consider myself lucky to be able to um see that firsthand yeah. you know and you here. can learn like different new styles that if you haven't heard of a style you somebody pops something on you're like oh let me try that out so yeah. just a whole lot of things to learn you know going places and going and you know different shows or whatnot so. yeah that's cool that's really stuff. cool yeah good stuff really good stuff so we're right at um the half hour mark and the one thing that i would love to hear about is what went into your last release um tell us a little bit about that what kind of inspired some of these we now we know that three of them exist on apple music but the last one is the one that i really really liked as well um and it, to me it really was a beautiful song can you tell us a little bit about it and what kind of was inspiring you for you to make that it's the a breakup pretty much or of some sort um and then uh and just you know, cause called ice, and then like the main lyric is my love's run cold, and then just feeling sort of sort of an emo song, you know. I'm sort of sort of a dark sort of. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, hey, it happens. And the musicianship on it is beautiful, and that's it. I'm really, I'm really, you know, the yeah, the way it flows, it's like it's yeah, it's one of those where it, it's on repeat because it's. You definitely feel the song. Obviously, everybody's been through a breakup, so but it's like you feel, like the emotion and like the the rawness of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you, yeah. you know what somebody's been through. You know, so mm -hmm. it definitely relates to a lot of people. Yeah, it's a little bit of an emotional, emotional tune, but uh, but then songs like Bar Room will balance it out. You know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> that's that's been fun. Yeah, but that's what but that's what makes good music. And so when we talk about what makes good music, it's that coming from the heart emotional feeling piece that is somewhat universal. You know, it's a human experience to feel breakup and to feel a love loss and being able to put it into words and being able to express it differently than anybody else. I would say that this right. song is definitely right. an expression from you only. And the lyrics were made huh. by you, and the music is very, uh, you know, you, within your sense of feeling and passion. And being able to express that out to the world is so amazing. And the one thing that I really liked was that there's a lot of really, like, your lyrics are very great. <laughs> but then, like you said, the musicianship is, like, spot on. I mean, just... Spot, yeah. Yeah, it, it was amazingly well done. Yeah. Thank you. Now, yeah. did you now who played? Now, did you have some session players stick in, or did you have some people that you knew kind of step in and help play with you? Yep. Yep. Um, I did that one was a uh, from uh, people in Los Angeles, and that was like right in between my move from Los Angeles to. Uh, Nashville, so it might have been like almost a breakup song, leaving LA, and you know I was nervous about leaving. God, I was there for close to fifteen years, so um, it was sort of sort of difficult leaving there. And but I wanted to step into Nashville because of the songwriting, and and just see who I could meet, try a new city, and. Um, but yeah, uh, so the, yeah, the players, um, like the fiddle is, uh, uh, Edgar, 
Sandoval. He's in. He's a. a you'll catch him in a symphony, playing for like the at the Disney Hall, you know. And, and it was one of his first sort of bluegrass bands too. So we sort of like, but he was like an ex. Like his his musicianship is just. Um, so, and then um, Charles Beach on the upright bass. He's now in South America playing like he he performs there um pretty much i think he lives there now and then um scott gates he's from south carolina i believe but i met him in los angeles um and then uh yeah it's uh then friend megan singing so yeah from a little bit from here a little bit from there and then uh, the drummer the bar on is nashville and then i had it mixed in nashville from uh, someone who knew bluegrass music, said, I want a pop bluegrass sound. And that's what they gave me. I was like, okay, thank you. So, um, but yeah, a lot, a lot sort of went into, <laughs> a lot went into it. But, but that's really cool, though. And that's what I really liked how you were able to. Now, what made you think the Irish instrument of all things? I mean, I was like, what? When you think about that, you're like, hey, I'm going to throw in this. Did you hear it from someplace and was like, oh, that'd be a perfect fit for this song I just made? Well, I had a studio in uh, Los Angeles and somebody had left like a, those those drums. It was like a wall decoration. Something you know, like they got real ones and fake ones. I think someone left a wall decoration at my studio. So my first record, when I started making this music, it was under a different name. Um which I'll probably re-release all that under Long, James Longstreet. Um, but yeah, we had a, I just tapped on that drum. And then when I was in Nashville, I just put up something on like Facebook looking for this and somebody hit me up. He couldn't believe it either. He's like, wow, you know what I mean? What do you, like, who needs that? I'm like, well, thank you for being here. And, and he's an Irishman. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's, he's just like a, a man from Ireland and, he um he just did great and i it was unexpected i didn't know who was going to show up at my door you know right. but the guy was like he just yeah he just knew the instrument and so he's all over a lot of my a lot a lot of records so you'll hear yeah. that you'll hear that it's even in bar room if you listen closely you know he does a lot of brush work um but uh yeah yeah it just sort of happened and yeah just sort of based off wall decorations th th this is what i love so i love the it was a wall decoration in my studio to now i'm going to put it on my major releases because it just because some guy i was like hey i kind of like the sound of the wall decoration can yeah. you play is there somebody else out there that can actually play the real thing and you get this random guy off facebook of all places yeah. which and he's like, yeah, that's me right here. I'm the guy that plays that, that you don't know really what that sounds like. Right. And now you get to hear the real version of it and you put it in your music and it sounds amazing. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's a great story. Absolutely love it, man. That's cool. Yeah. And I've seen it around in a lot of bluegrass music. So it was sort of like, sort of just a folk instrument again, you know, keeping it sort of let the voice carry it and. You know, so well, I'm glad you liked that. I yeah, love well, it. Yeah. yeah, right on, man. That's really cool. And that's what I picked up. There's a lot of the folk bluegrass, which yeah. is definitely you're in the right area for it, for sure. Because all of the people that I know that really do bluegrass and are recording bluegrass are coming out of Nashville or out of the South somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but absolutely dig the vibe. I mean, that. but what's cool is you kind of put a modern twist on it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think I'm doing something. Like, I'll bring in some players. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. And I, in my mind, I'm like, this is like a bluegrass tune. I'm like, isn't it? They're like, no, not quite. It's different. I'm like, well, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's. But that's what's cool about it is that you're putting your spin and your and it's unique. So you're not you maybe you're not adhering to all of the bluegrass. This is what bluegrass is, right? 
you're saying, but this is my style. This is my take on yeah. it, which is yeah. kind of like when you think about food, this is my take on right. Thai food. And yeah. it's it's fusion at that point, and it's your own. Yeah, so you're right. being in, your inspiration is bluegrass and all these other genres, and then you're able to take that and then push it into in a beautiful to, into your own beautiful music that's uniquely yours. Which you know somebody told me this week, and one of my bosses said, if I wanted to go hear a record of your favorite bluegrass, I would have hired that bluegrass band. I didn't want to hire that bluegrass band. I wanted you to make your own. Right. And sometimes that little, that that's who you are is this is individual you and you're making your music the way that you want to with inspirations from different places. I love it, man. That's just cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope to stay in Nashville for a little bit and keep developing, but who knows where it'll take me. You know, I'm, We'll see. It's the way of the journey, right? It's, you know, know, it's the way of the journey. If it's, if it's in dog years, you might be moving to New York next year or something, right? <laughs> I would love <laughs> to go to New York sometime. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, that's where like the, the uh, uh, old folk music sort of began um, during the, uh, oh, my brain. Anyhow, a lot of the, uh, uh, anyways, but yeah, a lot of that folk music. There's a certain term. There's a term for it, but I'm, I'm my mind is um, misplaced it. But um, I wonder what's over there as far as songwriters. Yeah, I don't know. And we've actually interviewed a few from Brooklyn, and I think we've had two or three folks from New York on our show. And right. it's and it, you know what's really cool is that their style has some of that hip hop in it. Like AJ was like brilliant i mean absolutely brilliant very i would say modern pop but with that edm piece to it yeah that'd be i would that's what i really liked about hearing your music is that you can definitely tell there's a lot more instruments going on as well but in balance it's not there's nothing overshadowing another like i listened to a lot of hard rock and hard rock from the 80s had singer and then just a very loud guitar somebody playing distortion you know but sometimes you kind of miss some of the other nuances in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'd be, yeah, you'd be surprised even with acoustic instruments, mute one, something else will pop out. It's very delicate. It's crazy. It's like, but then I then but then I really appreciate bands who can rock and just everyone's, you know, yeah. can just stay in their pocket and yeah. there's some, it takes yep. takes some friendship, camaraderie. Yeah, true. And somebody's like, "I'm out of here. I'm taking out. I'm in my car. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna leave now. Um, <laughs> I'm out of here." <laughs> yeah, no. He heard that hey, last I'm guy. He's here. like, "I'm, I'm out of here. It sounds like dead dogs. I'm out of here." <laughs> <laughs> I I'm love it. so I uh, I Kimbrough is here. I'm on yeah, a that's bit. Uh, awesome. Yeah, that's songwriter awesome. night here. So I'm yeah, yeah. Signed up to go in later. And... I love it, man. I love it. Do you know what? This is so Arizona has a songwriter thing, and I was, I was forced to go to these songwriter events like all of my young younger life. And so it's really fun to be able to talk to songwriters and go, yeah, I remember going to those events. <laughs> yeah. But they were Arizona, so they were a lot smaller. Like, it would be like 10 people showing up to these songwriter events. But How was uh, it in, you said Arizona? You had, yeah. You, you found, that's, uh, do, you, do you still, do you go to those? Or is that something that you? That's what my parents did. So my mom's oh, wow. a uh, my mom's a singer, and then my dad's a composer. So kind of the same, you know. We got music background, and they would go to the Arizona Songwriter Association, and then they would there'd be like a main speaker that would come in and talk to them. Usually somebody out of L.A., and then they would talk about better, you know, how to write better music and t give tips and tricks on how to, you know, and then be able to perform something. And then everybody would kind of like critique the performance and say what uh, they'd liked and what they didn't like. And then uh, hopefully in a way to help enhance their career. 
I never met anybody. You know, I don't. I was so young that I was like ten. You know, from like ten to twelve or thirteen that I remember going to these things. That's but it was always fun. It was yeah. fun hanging out with musicians. There was always like the guys. There was a band there. You know, some guys with cool that looked all cool. Hey, I'm I'm here for the Arizona songwriter thing. I'm here. You know, it's like our group is here. And then they had people like my parents who were just, my mom was a teacher. So she just loved being around more musicians and yeah, it's good, good vibe. What's her, what was her instrument? She was a chorus teacher, but she also played guitar. So she was a uh, taught by, a, she was one of those student of Segovia, which Segovia had a lot of teachers. It was like the teacher of the teacher, but she was very good guitarist, like an excellent guitarist. Oh, Still plays. Yeah, she's in, she's the reason, what inspired me to start playing guitar. So, yeah, she's amazing, amazing guitarist. And I'm always, like, blown away by her classical skills. But, yeah. So I've had your dad on, which maybe we should, would she be interested in doing a lot of streams? <laughs> I, I think she, I talked to her. I talked to her two days ago, and I think she would be. But uh, cool. yeah, it's always fun to have the songwriter thing is so cool, and it's a way of being able to get out there, right, James? It's just mm -hmm. a way yeah. of being able to network again, and that was the big thing about these singer songs. People don't realize that networking is everything in these towns, like what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Networking is everything. That's the reason why when you move to a new city it's about getting back out there and restarting over. So he went from LA where he was established for 15 years to having to reestablish himself at a new, yeah. completely new city where nobody knows you. And you're going to have to start from the bottom up, starting at, you know, the small bars and places that exactly. will take, you know, gig at the mm -hmm. coffee place. And then slowly you'll start like after what you're at, like four years, you're starting to meet people, starting to know people. You're showing up to the right events at mm -hmm. first, you don't even know what the right events are. No, you know, yeah, you sit through so much, yeah, yeah, um. and and that's why it's ten years is because it takes you about ten years to do your <laughs> to pay your dues, right? That's what they say. You're paying your dues. You got to play at all these, you know, all these little on the road small venues, and then you start working, getting bigger venues, bigger bars, and then finally, you know, people have recognized it, and you're being asked to control collaborate and or sing or write a song for somebody yeah and that's the goal right yeah is that is your goal to be a writer sing or do you want your stuff to be out there or is it okay if the, it's your stuff is out there but additionally maybe somebody picks up one of your songs because that's country music is known for picking up songs like hey yeah. you write the lyrics i you get the you get everything right but then somebody else may sing your song yeah i'm totally into it yeah somebody's like I like, and that's part of the reason why I'm pursuing being an artist because I didn't know anyone who could cut my tune. So I'm like, I'll just do it for now. Well, that's cool, man. <laughs> and then, um, but I enjoy it. So, but well, again, like writing with other people is always fun and, and to see where a song could go. I mean, there's a bunch in the catalog that five years, someone might pull it out and, you know, sure. You never know. Hopefully, I'm still in Nashville. Yeah, there you yeah. go. You never know, but I hope so. We hope that your career takes off. It's it's great music. So, uh, we have about 10, 15 minutes left. So let's hear some songs, buddy. Okay, dokie. I'm gonna try to prop this up right here for you. Um. <laughs> Loud and clear. Sounds, Sounds good. Okay, I'm gonna do a song uh, called um, uh, "See You Next See See You Next Tuesday." It's not released yet, but um. It's only Tuesday, I can't be drinking today, Lord I've been thinking that maybe once, okay, it's only Tuesday, I can't be 
smoking today. I've been thinking that maybe once, okay. One turns to two, two turns three, four hours later, you're all looking at me. Five rolls around, the sun comes up, gotta get to work, but I'm all messed up. It's only Tuesday. I can't be drinking today. I've been hoping that maybe once, okay. It's only Tuesday. I can't be smoking today. I've been hoping for a little toast, okay. Woke up at one, clocked in at two, supposed to be noon, but what can you do? Boss said son, you can leave at four. At three fifty-nine, I was out that door. It's only Tuesday. I can't be drinking today. I've been thinking that maybe once, okay. It's only Tuesday, I can't be smoking today, I've been hoping one little toast, okay, I've been hoping hey, hey, that one's okay. Yeah, look at these playing live. That's cool. Oh, he's playing live. That is awesome. country country artist. That's awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I like that one. And it's That's Tuesday. A, it is a Tuesday, and I will. I have been there. I have so been there. <laughs> I've been there on a. I've been in there on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday. <laughs> You're like. Hey, you know what? I, I'm supposed to work tomorrow. I got a shift tomorrow at six in the morning. Uh, no, not tonight. I know, you know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. One, one, okay, one. And then it always it's like turns those into memes, <laughs> those memes of like, I'm all having. I told the girls I'm gonna have one drink. <laughs> <laughs> you're dragging. You're dragging. You know. You're dragging your butt home at two in the morning after yeah. the bars closed, and you're like, "Yeah, I got." And then you're like showing up with like three hours of sleep, and you're looking like and smelling like a brewery. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I work. I was working at this restaurant, and one of the cooks comes up to me. And he's like, "You smell like an alcoholic." <laughs> I'm like, what? No. And I, I don't, I don't think I have like, it's not necessarily like a problem like that, you know. I can, I can just stop, like if I need, you know, if if I know it's if I just have, you know, if I want to, technically. Right. Um, but I'm like, huh, maybe, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> So that made me think, you, like, okay, smell, okay. you smell like an alcoholic. You <laughs> s- <laughs> like you can sniff that out like a like I'm a like, dog. Like you smell drink. like you you smell like you drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's like this words of wisdom from he's probably like sixty, like a like a line chef or something. You know, like the smartest guys out there. <laughs> always, <laughs> the, always. You know, the chefs out there, they just got yeah. all the wisdom for you. Isn't that the funny? I I sat so one summer I worked at NAU and I just did um, dishwashing, and I was with this guy that quoted me like all this philosophy. He was a philosophy major, and all he would do was just all day long we would talk about philosophy of life. Yes, yes. Philosophy of the dishroom. I mean, we were just <laughs> like it was crazy. It was one of the craziest summers I've ever had. This guy was just. And he was so into, he was just like, I don't care about working the dish room. This is nothing matters. I'm just, this is a means to an end. And he was just like, yeah, I guess you're right. That's what you, well, that's why you take some of these jobs. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Like it's a means to be able to produce your music and stay in Nashville. And yeah. you know, if you got to talk some, talk to the line chef about sometimes, yeah, you're right. I drink too much yeah. sometimes. <laughs> 
I mean, but if you don't live life, I mean, you don't have these stories to be able to sing about, right? And I think that's the other thing is that if you were to live this, well, I lived this squeaky clean life, then you know, you're not going to have that much music to write about, (laughs) right? Yeah, you do need, yeah, it takes takes some some living, you know, yep. Okay, so do you have another one for us, sir? You say another one? Yes, you bet. Another one, I might, might. My phone might run out of batteries, but I'm gonna. No, oh no! I'm gonna do ice, oh, no. gonna do ice for you. All okay. right, squeeze it in. Squeeze the ice in. Mm. Hopefully, it sounds good. Oh, is that? It's a little, it's a little like choppy. I, like, I don't know if your yeah. audio is kind of going in and out. I don't know if you want to like come in, come yeah, out we, real quick. Cool. Yeah, it's starting to go. It's starting to go robot. Uh, yeah, oh. it's starting to, yeah, it's starting to yeah. sound like robotish. Yeah. That might be the end of the show, folks. Oh no. Everybody's somebody. heard. Yep. Can we try? Yeah, yeah you might want to try. Yeah, come out. Yeah, try that. Yeah, and we'll try see what happens. Yep. Okay. Oh no! We want that ice. I was like, that's a good, that's was a like, good hold song. On. That's a good song. The last one was good too, though. And I was just yeah, like, was yeah, good. I, I'm yeah, like, I totally identify. I have that little ending. I don't want it to be like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. hold on, what's that? <laughs> like, I don't want it to be that. Like, oh. <laughs> I know. So we'll see. We'll, see that what one. We'll, try, we'll end it. What's up, Ellie? What's up, Amanda? Ellie, Ellie, what's going on? Ellie, Amanda. hit me up. Hit me up. Yeah, that's Ellie. He, she was our winner. Definitely hit me up. Sorry, we haven't gotten uh, a hold of you. We will definitely uh, give you a couple choices of what uh, to choose from if you're still in here. Uh, what T-shirt you want? So we'll Absolutely. definitely give that to you. We didn't. What do you mean, though? Yes, Ellie. Yes. Yes. So yes. Hit me up. <laughs> we'll give you some selections, and you can choose your T-shirt. That's right. And uh, but and by the way, 425 is going to be a big event for all of these folks. So we are oh, going to one be year, doing one whole year of doing this fun stuff, man. It was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, let's see. What he yeah, I think we're on our last leg here. On oh, no. No. Yeah. oh hey, <laughs> so we got one too so, there. Yeah, there we go. So we'll let it go. Everybody, go catch this artist. Uh, he's James Longstreet. Amazing Spotify, SoundCloud. Definitely heard about SoundCloud, so he has a little bit more on SoundCloud. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, oh, no. and he's gone. And he's gone. His battery. We died. will. We will ask and see later on if we can do a little kind of separate post. So, kind of yep. stay tuned for our post, and we'll see if we can kind of squeeze that out. So, we definitely wanted to see the ice. Is a really good song. It so uh, we definitely didn't want that the choppy robot voice type song, but we'll ask him if he can do a little separate like uh, post or something like that, and you know we'll share it out there to you guys. Yep. And so in three weeks, go tell your friends, go tell your family. In on four twenty five, we are going to have our year, and we're going to have some giveaways. This is like beard. This is when we did beards and dessert. Well, this is when we started with beards and desserts. Then we kind of got yeah. up a little bit in the music, and that's how. Casey, like it was a little bit born, so this is our new channel. So I think yeah, I think it goes as far back as on this channel at seven months. But on the Bearded Practitioners channel, we started doing our live streams there. So uh, it is our one year. So absolutely, we'll be rocking out with uh, some guests, some live performances, and yeah, like you said, some giveaways. So yeah. share it out, get some people in here, and uh, let's uh, let's make this thing a big one. Absolutely, you'll, uh, you'll definitely enjoy it. So we'll. Put some nice promos out there and you know hype it up. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was fun. So again, amazing artist, and he had to jet really quick, but that his, uh, his battery died. Ah, sucks. So no, yeah. oh no. But Darn go it. check him out on Spotify, YouTube, all that stuff. James Longstreet got some good music out there. So um definitely don't let that uh, stop you from going and check out his music. And yeah, enjoy it. Yep. And you know what a time it is? What is it time for? James. What time is it? <laughs> it's, it's time. It's time to tell everybody goodbye and, oh. and stay tasty.
He does it better. Than <laughs> <that>. <laughs> and stay tasty. And stay tasty, Bye. everybody. Thanks for coming on in. We appreciate yeah. it. And uh, thanks for checking out our video. Giant cookie, diesel cookies. Go diesel check them out. Cookies. Go check them out. He's he's the, he's one of them. They're good. <laughs> they are good. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. See you.